Okay, let's wait for the people to come and just like the prior time. And I was uh, planning to just uh, show around the uh, rules. So we show here. Um, and also we start to record from now. So people who will watch will be able to show. So from now it's recorded. Uh, uh, let me show the other screen. Hello, Vera. And let's wait for a few minutes before we have uh, everyone coming. So if you had the blank template, you may have seen the rules that look a bit like this. And at first it may seem a bit uh, complex, but there is a reason why there is um, that many rules. And if you look into details, you can see that there are two tracks because we want a task to appear differently randomly. If we have two groups or more, we don't want to have them to solve all exactly the same riddles and the same characters and the same um, story for the escape uh, game. And it means that later when we will do the map version, we won't need this because the randomness will make people uh, walk uh, in random direction by themselves instead of having a predefined uh, set of uh, tests that appear one after another. And as you can see here, we have the three levels, so I even put colors to, to make it easier to see the different levels. And here you can also determine the distance walking distance that allows you to open these different tasks. And most important is the score. So the game takes the player from level to level depending on the score. So here, if you are strictly under seven points, we stay in the level one. But then if are equal or superior to uh, seven points, uh, all of this will simply disappear because uh, the logic here is not uh, followed anymore. And uh, when we reach uh, seven or more points, uh, then we have, uh, uh, we have uh, the second level. Hi, Davish. So as I say, we just uh, look into the rules of the blank template right now before we start the webinar and the recording is already on. So I will show this to the, the audience that will watch this on YouTube. And it goes on and on for the next two levels. So this time at one point, so it has uh, one point after uh, point after point until it reach seven. And this test uh, adds 10 points each. So this is why we have 77. So they add up. 27, 37, until the player reaches 77. And this way, because uh, here we make the test appear when these two logic are uh, fulfilled, then it means that all of this will disappear once we reach 77. And same story here. Here we have uh, not one, not 10, but 100 points that are given. So we go 100 points after 100 points until we reach seven correct answer here, which means that it will reach 777. And again here we have two different tracks because we want this riddles to appear differently, randomly and differently from the one group to another. So here there are only two tracks but um, I could, yeah, if I wanted, I could make a three or four tracks. But yeah, I still wanted to keep the rules relatively light. And here is the final pass, the final boss or the final uh, step before the exit. So whenever we reach 70, uh, 777, we have a new task appearing. 
saying that uh, we are going to the final boss, to the final level, and it requires a walk. And here, in this task 48, we have the, uh, the final riddle. And if the final riddle is solved, then we have a message and the gate is finished. So in the few words, this is how the logic works uh, for the uh, blank uh, template using the other method. And for the map, it will be a bit simpler as I will show a bit later. So if any of you here in this room or in the recording, or if, if any from those who are watching the recording have any question, feel free to contact me by email uh, ivan at lotquist.com or uh, by uh, Discord. Okay, it's 11.06, so we'll start the webinar right now. And I show another screen. All right, welcome to the webinar number three, uh, how to change the rule and how to use the map. So there is a little change for today and today is going to be the third and last uh, session for this webinar series because I realized by preparing the webinar series that the two topics, the rules and the map are closely related. In this way, uh, instead of making two small webinars, I prefer to merge the two. So uh, today we will uh, uh, look into the rules and by looking into the rules, we will be able to create a map version of uh, the, the escape uh, game. So for this, uh, uh, the plan for today, today we'll uh, say a few words about the uh, previous uh, webinar session. I will uh, start a small survey to know uh, what's your level using the creator and the Loquist platform. So then I can adapt a bit uh, my explanation for the next part. I will uh, dip do a deep dive into the rules and especially to create the map version. So we'll uh, look into the rules, but we'll also transform our current version of the, uh, the escape into something that you can use as a map and that you can use in your own location. And I will talk about a new blank template that uh, you will, that I will uh, copy in your account, especially if you already gave me your account ID before. And as usual, that will be the question and feedback session. So if you agree with this plan, let's move on to the next part. In the first webinar session, we discussed the content of uh, Loquiz Escape Game. So we discussed about, uh, we discussed what we should write down, what we should put as a story or as a content in the game, meaning that in the quiz, what the text should be added in the tasks, and from the task we can have the, the content of the game. And this is especially the case with the blank template using the other meta. You just need to change the task and you can have your story. And in this previous session, I also made a workshop where we could, we could uh, all of us uh, invent a story that would explain why we, do, uh, why we need to escape from a place. And um, we had some uh, interesting ideas, for example, uh, an idea where players had to defuse a bomb from New York, or another idea where there was a mix between an escape game and a murder mystery with the final uh, aim to find who done it, who's the culprit of the ongoing murder investigation, of the ongoing murder. But we didn't uh, go into the rules in this first session. I completely um, ignored the rules because this was going to be the topic for today, for today's session. 
And uh, now I would like to uh, have an idea for those who are here. Uh, what's your level uh, using the quiz? So for this, uh, uh, there will be um, there will be I will make a jump bar. So here we simply ask you uh, when you are on the, the jump bar to move, uh, to take a post-it and move uh, in the zone, in the square that matches with your situation. So for this, I will uh, copy this link in the uh, Google Meet chat. So we uh, do have in this room people who are a newcomer who never use the creator and those who uh, use the creator for their company. And yes, everyone is welcome, of course. And for those who never use the creator, you can always contact me after the uh, this webinar or anytime, and I can always uh, start an introduction introduction with you on how to use the creator and how how you can apply any team building idea or any outdoor game idea into a local game because as you could see from the uh, the um, rules we can create pretty much anything that will uh, closely look like what you are trying to achieve and I can see that um, most of you sold a low quiz game with the map. In fact, a low quiz was initially made with the map and um, it was uh, created back in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. As, a, as the name says, as a low quiz, uh, location quiz game where people would go to different places and solve uh, quizzes. And the idea of Odometer is not that common still because it's only appeared in 2020 during the pandemics where we wanted to make people move outside of their home despite the fact that they weren't at their office. So the Odometer is a bit more specific but it allows the player to have an outdoor game without being physically in a place or physically together. And I do know some companies who sold with the odometer, and this is uh, uh, this can be a bit more difficult to sell because uh, it needs to explain to the company that it can be outdoor without having anyone, everyone in the same room. But with a little bit of story, it can be. I wouldn't say easy, but. Uh, a bit easier to sell. And for the same reason I stated before, I can imagine that the map version is more uh, suitable because um, usually in an event company, we set up a place where the players, where the, for example, the employees of a corporate would meet up and start a game. And also, we don't have that many remote events today, maybe because we had quite uh, Zoom fatigue, let's say, since the pandemics. But we can still have some for companies who are um, exactly with that. We, can, uh, we do have and uh, still have many events with the odometer for companies that are located in many countries in the world. I already witnessed a game that was hosted and there were around four or five different offices across the world and each office would have different teams together and play outside and they would play all together for the same game. So the other matter we have to keep in mind that it's very good for even bigger corporate. Um, what do you mean by uh, remote delivery? Or do you mean 
if you mean, uh, if you have to sell the game for a company that is not uh, in the same place as yours, uh, yeah, remote delivery, and um, it's indeed the the case. Uh, the odometer can be useful for this. I would say even with the map version, you can still do uh, for remote delivery in case if your client is willing to uh, test with you in the location that you've uh, decided. And also you can do without test, but this I wouldn't recommend. And for the odometer, the advantage also is that uh, people uh, just walk and they walk where they can walk. You don't need to check if one location is in a private property or if one location is in a place with road in renovation. So, um, yeah, mostly yes, the odometer, uh, odometer version is made for uh, remote delivery. And let's go to the next part. Can we just uh, change the screen? So I would say, of all that uh, each version had uh, have their different usage, but uh, the advantage of each version is that we still uh, maintain uh, people in an outdoor uh, setup. Okay, so uh, now let's go back to the uh, slides. And uh, let's um, dive into the rules. So in this part, uh, at first, I would like to show you the rules uh, as I did in the beginning. I will show uh, you a bit uh, quicker this time because I already explained in the beginning. And uh, because uh, the most important for this part is what uh, going to happen next. Because here we were talking about uh, the Odometer version versus the map version. So the odometer is based on the walking distance. And we want to transform it into a map version. So uh, how do we do this? I'm going to show you. Oh, sorry. Okay, so as I explained in the beginning, the rules are made uh, like this uh, with different level, and the level depends uh, on the point that you get. So there are uh, my zones, uh, 7, 77, and uh, 777 uh, right here. And there are trace more rules because we want to have uh, this uh, result appearing differently depending on the team. So not everyone has the same uh, rules, the same uh, results appearing for them. So if you want to make uh, the map version, uh, let's make a map version if you want to make it. So we'll uh, preserve the same idea of level, so level 1, level 2, etc. Uh, so we start uh, with the first test that is uh, open for answering. And in fact, we don't need any of this because all of this is uh, about the list and the odometer. We will not uh, use the list. So the first thing we want to make uh, on the uh, map uh, that we want to make appear on the map is the test number 44. So the test number 44 is like an information task where we uh, say that uh, there is a, we need to um, we need to get the, the information. And we also want to make something else appear on the map. These are of course all the riddles. So I can, if you look in the riddles, you can realize that 
that uh, they all have in common the tag level one for the riddles level one so instead of uh, adding uh, one by one the different tasks here i will simply use task with tag and i will add level one like this so we add our one there in this park And what will happen? Player will start uh, somewhere in the park, and the randomness will make them go in uh, to toward different ways. So here we don't need to have uh, different tracks. Let's say the game itself uh, has some randomness uh, uh, into it. And in fact, that's it for the level one. We just make the level two appear when they reach. Uh, seven points like this uh, so it will open this task and it will make all this uh, disappear because we are not uh, having any more under uh, strictly under seven points and so i will repeat the same operation here i erase this because these are list and these are tracks which we all need so you notice we have a, a double condition here when this test is finished and when the score is under 77 and here's the idea you open it you will see that uh, we have a, a level 2 and so it will add us more tests to add on the map and uh, same idea okay yeah I need to uh, show on that of course like this and same idea you can just add around so what I would do I would just uh, put the task as a circle around it so usually people are around like this and so they uh, have the choice to go um, on the task that is the, I would say the same distance from the center so let's say I dispose the task on a circle on which the center is the exit the future escape point that i will show uh, later and and as you can see there is a bit less rules this task will disappear when we reach a 77 point same story here so i delete here show on map and task with type. In fact, I could use this and just say from 2 to 14 or from 16 to 28, but it's up to you. And it's often like this when you have a greater top logics. There are several ways to achieve the same thing. So again, here we add a task around. So you can see I put the purple as the level 3, blue as the level 2, and green as the level 1. And it's the same color as on Escape Imagination Lab. And red as the final level, final level that we can see here. Uh, so we don't need this because we don't have any uh, odometer. It is. And okay, I will remove this. In this case, I will just deactivate this task. So I just duplicate because this task is more like an information saying that you need to meet the characters. But here we reach uh, the um, final level. And oh wait, I made. And it is. And uh, there is the final task that we show on map. I'll say the most important is the 48, and the 48 is the task with the final riddle that we put here. Once they finish the third level, they will only have one final riddle. So they all gather in the same place. And for example, you can put this place as in the conference room. 
and I recommend that you put a bigger space because you would have all the team arriving at the same place and if you have 25 teams for example then you may need a bit more space, a bit more area if you don't want them to be packed and when the task 48 is finished in fact when it's finished correctly because this is the final task like this not only finished because we want them to answer correctly here then we add the final task and once the final task is finished then the whole game is finished so that's it and that's all the uh, map version and if you have a map version and you want to play in a, another place you jump you don't need to move all the pins one by one it would take uh, too much time you have uh, this feature move all pins so to move all the pins you need to take one uh, reference pin meaning that you wherever you click it will uh, put this reference wherever you want okay let's imagine that we play on this island and you just click here and it move all the tasks uh, in this way it will uh, make it easy for you if you have several clients several locations and you don't want to repeat the, the game creation each time so that's it for the logic and i was talking about the uh, blank template so there will be a, a blank template with the map version let's go back to the slide and uh, we'll talk about this All right. as I say you don't need to repeat all the process because I will copy a map template on your account if you already gave me the account your account id and um, yeah you need to ask me uh, once again because i will do this and if you didn't get the, the previous uh, template or if you didn't send me uh, account id then you can still do this by sending me a message on discord or an email and here is my email address my email address is ivan at liquid.com just send me just tell me i would like to have the two blank template and then i will send to your account and i will uh, show you where you can find these blank templates and so from these templates you can use them as much as you want and make them so that you can uh, use commercially And now let's go to the question and feedback session. Uh, session. Do you have any question uh, to ask uh, regarding the uh, the rules or the or the map usage? Do you have any questions about uh, how to make the rules or any uh, question how to offer the game to your clients? How to sell? Because it's also important to be able to sell the game. Then feel free to ask. And if you don't have any question uh, now, you can also send me an email. Uh, my email box is always open uh, for you to send me any questions. And usually, I answer uh, within the next uh, next working day. Well, I try not to answer the weekend, but yeah, uh, if it's urgent, I can. Also, if you would like a 30 minute demo you can also always ask me and i can uh, show more in details uh, here or i can also help you how to set up the game for your own business for your own location and your uh, clients Alright, if you have uh, 
if you have any question feel free to type them on the chat and if you don't have any you can also send me uh, an email or also a discord um, a discord message so for the discord it will remain at least uh, one month up and if you have any question regarding the the escape games or if you need to sell an escape game anytime now because now it's a bit the the high season for the events and it's um, the end of the autumn uh, the end of um, the start of autumn is still quite a season where people can play outside but it's quite the end so if you think about offering an outdoor game now feel free to ask the community on the discord so that was the last session and thank you very much for attending and um, yes and thank you and as i say if you have any questions feel free to uh, contact me anytime later